first off, I want to say that everything in this video is my own opinion, and I'm not wanting to come after any commentators in specific or anything like that, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. You know, I've never commentated a Smash event. Um, I would love to. That would be super fun. Uh, please invite me to do so, but I've never done it, so... I'm coming at it from an outside perspective, but I feel like I have an idea that I really want to share and stay tuned for the end because it's going to be a banger. I want you all to to listen to what I have to say, but um, this is my commentary about Smash Brothers commentary. You know, the people that are talking while you're watching the game. This is my opinion on that. So let's go ahead and get a little bit dicey. You see, the reason that I thought about this is because every six months or so these threads pop on reddit and then there's always at least one hate thread after every single tournament about some sort of commentator like why did they have this person on the mic they always clip the mic uh they don't know anything about the game blah 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 these are valid concerns but i don't think that they necessarily matter in the long run and even when these threads pop up a lot of the people there are defending those commentators or are just even apathetic. Like maybe they just watch the games on mute. So I feel like the majority of the Smash community doesn't just hate commentary, but those hateful voices are quite loud, you know, because hate sticks out. And it's almost a similar reason as to why these commentators get hate in the first place is why these people stick out. It's because they stick their neck out there to be criticized. And so I respect, uh, I have mad respect for the commentators, um, especially because most of them are not top, tippy top players, uh, but they do know enough about the game and are willing to learn and are just so invested in the community that I really, I really give that respect. Um, so anyways, why is there all this criticism to Smash commentators in general? Well, I think it's because that Every person has their own idea of what good commentary is. Um, also, there's not really any sort of incentive for the commentary community to get larger because there's not really a whole lot of money in Smash Brothers. Um, there, there's probably less and less as time goes on, um, until, but just ma mainly because of the difficulties of running tournaments. And normally these tournaments are paying for top players to be there, not necessarily top commentators. And certainly that these really, really high ticket commentators are paid to be there and maybe their flights are paid for, but they're not making their main living off of Smash commentary. Like that's kind of silly. Um, and so there is not really a huge reason to improve at commentary in the first place, but I want to go back to this idea that everybody has a different idea of what good commentary is, uh, because I want to kind of focus that down a little bit because I think that this person on Reddit really put it perfectly when they said that what makes a good commentary is the, is the question and uh, sufficient object 89 says four different criteria for good commentary the first one being simplifying the technical details so they're digestible for melee heads and some random who accidentally joined the stream so basically saying kind of saying what's going on um at a very technical level and then providing context for the matchup like yo uh what's the matchup like between marth and link i mean well and then they go on into like you know link has projectiles uh they got work around that uh things like that um the third one is pro provide context for the players and any history between them set wise and this is personally my favorite thing about commentary is the stories and narratives of these different players who are uh, maybe they've had sets in the past they've been really close uh, but one player's been up recently and so we'll see if the other player can bring it back that that, that kind of um almost like anime like storyline I am a sucker for that. And then, of course, number four, That Ain't Falco. That's the screaming into the mic. Y'all know what That Ain't Falco is from. The oh, Wombo Combo. Happy feet. Happy Wombo feet. Combo. That Ain't Falco. That Ain't Falco. Oh, 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 oh. So, you know, the classic clip of, of Wombo Combo there is... um is really just the epitome of like a grassroots commentary style 
and it kind of goes up perfectly against the um the other commentary commentary style that I feel like uh, was going through the Smash community for a while is the like very esports clean type commentary style. I have an example of this like right here. And the up tilt too to send him and jungle him in the sky. Yeah, I, I think that that's a, a decision based on having a stock lead, to be honest, because that yeah. percent will still be relevant. You know, the much more calm, controlled style of of commentary in general. Uh, very analytical, trying to get in the nitty gritty of the game. And people like that too, especially when these people who are on the mic actually really know what they're talking about. Um, but I think that... Uh, that this is kind of good though be, because it interprets the game for like an uneducated audience and provides like enough nuance for the like really hardcore nerds of the community um and so i what i think uh, there's a clip that i think does all four of these things really really well and it's from riptide the most recent most recent tournament i just want to like go in and show off how in one minute they do all four of these things like perfectly <laughs> Go. I run. and uh yeah by the time mm -hmm. i like caught anything i was here so yeah but link this Marth. is how it's been this was how the last yep. so boom link marth he's kind of talking about what they're the providing a little bit of context of the matchup the character and, matchup um it's been interesting seeing Aklo just trying the, the dual main strat against Marth specifically. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit of context about Aklo and how what kind of player he is as a person. Like, he's trying dual mains, so now I know a little bit about that. other characters. Mm -hmm. I feel like anytime he gets frustrated by getting out punished. Ooh, 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 that's the tame version of the That Ain't Falco. So, like, you know, he got a double nair and Zane's off stage, and people are like, ooh, well, hold on. I just hope with Aklo at this point, Whichever one he picks, I just think he needs to pick one. At yeah. least for Zane, I'm like, dude, you gotta, cause like what he'll do is like, he'll start off solid with either Fox or Link, then switch, mm -hmm. and then it like throws his rhythm off, and then he starts to get bodied. So yeah. I so that's a little bit more context about Aklo and him versus Zane in specific. He, um, Homemade Waffles is like, hey, you should try and just pick maybe one. Either focus on Fox versus Marth or Link versus Marth and don't try and go between the two. So mm -hmm. some more context like of the Marth players. Has a pretty tough time like comboing Link in quite the same. And now the other guys starts talking about the characters themselves and how, how they go back and forth. And so this is like 46, 46 seconds into the video and we hit like all four. We already hit all four. Um, so so that's 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 kind of wild, honestly. That's I feel like that is quite good commentary. Um, now, when you're trying to evaluate commentary, I think the biggest thing to do is to just like manage your expectations um, because every single person who gets on the mic is going to have a different strength like for me like i said i think that i if i was a commentator i'd probably focus on storylines and maybe the they ain't, they that ain't falco type beat um because because i am like a gold ranked player on slippy so i don't necessarily have the nitty-gritty details um uh, i can make them digestible uh, but I can't really provide context for every single matchup and things like that. And so it, I would hope that the person I'd be commentating with would help my like help cover my weaknesses and then my strengths would cover theirs. Uh, I think that's the value of duo commentary in particular. Like the, the classic example in the melee scene is Scar and Toph. Like Scar has the, the classic clip of, uh, of this one right here. Garden, I think you should take me seriously because look at the scoreboard yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. I got numbers on the oh, oh. Yo, did he just walk up slowly and, and down, down smash? smash? So like he is all about like trying to get hype, but he also feeds into the crowd. He reads the room really, really well and he kind of takes the energy. Sometimes he'll be like whispering into the mic because it is like such an intense moment. And then boom, like something crazy happens like Captain Falcon walking up slowly and down smashing hacks. Boom, absolutely crazy. And then you can yell that. And that is like, I, I feel like that is just super duper good commentary. Um, Another like example of like reading the room is, is uh, like Smash Summit. 
There's like four of these guys on a couch. They're all kind of talking over each other, but it's like a chill environment. They don't have like this huge crowd that they're trying to like, you know, feed the energy off of or feed energy into. Let me tell you, when I went to the LCS Spring Finals to uh, on 2023 Spring Finals to LCS, it was held in North Carolina, so I was able to go. Those commentators fed off the energy of the crowd in the room and made those it made those hype moments that much more hype um but you know sometimes it's really cool to just have like a chill a chill game like a chill bracket this is this this game right here was the was the grand finals and they're just kind of like you know talking like all right fd we go let's see you know it's very much more relaxed um and one other thing too, and this is the idea that I hinted at at the very uh, beginning of the video. I think that people need, when they are thinking about their expectations of the commentary that they're about to watch or the commentary that is provided over top of their own sets when they are playing, you gotta think about the goal of the tournament and why they have commentators in the first place. Because let me tell you, me, the Smasher, I don't feel like that is the ultimate goal of the commentary um, to please me, the person who is already like invested in watching and knows what's going on, like at least to a certain extent. I feel like the most important thing for these commentators to do is follow those four tenants, those four tenants that we talked about earlier. Um, but it's mostly to make it digestible enough for new people to really, really enjoy watching it. So uh, one of my my Melee friends, uh, he's he's been solo commentating Ultimate Tournaments in my area. And I don't give a flying flip about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But he's very, very good at reading the room, the energy of the people. He's very good at like weaving narratives uh, to make it super entertaining. To I'm rooting for these players who I have no idea who they are, and he's very good at like the play-by-play -play and the um, getting hype when hype moments happen, and he does it all by himself. It's wildly impressive. Um, but some people sometimes complain, you know, like ah, he doesn't know anything about ultimate. He doesn't know anything about the game. He knows enough to be dangerous, but like the little technical details, he doesn't really know. But the problem is. He owns the game store. He wants people to join the community. He wants to provide this entertainment so that people want to be a part of it. And that I think is the most, like the best, the best thing you can do with commentary is want people to also be a part of it. You invite people to participate. And like, I really enjoy that style of commentary that um, you don't have to necessarily know every little detail and and that's fine. I, I mean, I can watch and I, I have a general good enough idea of what's going on. Like this isn't the radio I'm, I'm watching as well. And so those extra narratives, those little, little tidbits um, that kind of feed into the goal of attracting more people to the smash community. That is the type of commentary that I like to see. Because here's a little side tangent, friends. I know we're like, you know, 13 minutes into the video. Uh, shout out to you for sticking around this long. Hey, give me, you know, do a little heart and I'll pin your comment. If you're, if you give a, if you comment a heart right now, I'm going to pin that comment because you, you've stuck around this long. But I just want to leave you with this is that I really love Smash. I really do. And I want it to continue to grow. It's never been easier to get into Smash Brothers. I had to buy that GameCube back there for $120 and then like a, a, Game, a GameCube controller for like 60 Melee for another 100 bucks. Um, You know, when getting into Smash, like collecting CRTs, it was like $300 at least just to get into playing Melee at a competitive level. Now, you can download Slippy, and if you have an ISO, which you obtained somehow, you could be playing in like less than five minutes. It's wild, and you're playing really, really smooth rollback. It's, 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 it's crazy. So, it's never been easier to get into Smash Brothers. I just want people to join the community and 
and be engaged. They, I, I want them to want to be a part of it. And I feel like um, Smash commentary, especially at a high level, uh, when the viewers are the most, uh, when there's the most people that enter these tournaments, they need to be able to be engaged. And I think that comes through um, just really aiming your commentary towards people that don't necessarily have a home within the Smash community yet, but will um, once you draw them in, I guess. Alrighty, hopefully that all made sense. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Deuces, bye. Ah.